Tonight on the MTN News, some much needed rain. Northern Wyoming gets some help from Mother Nature in its battle with the Elk Fire as evacuation orders start to be lifted. Plus, a mysterious murder. We lost our brother, our son, our uncle, our best friends. Gallatin County investigates a gruesome murder that happened just near Big Sky. And wonders of the sky now hitting the canvas. We yearn to be surrounded by people who bear witness to our lives. One Billings man is combining his passions, creating artwork that is out of this world. EMTN 430 News on Q2 starts right now. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight at 4.30. I'm Charlie Kleps. Some good news tonight for the folks in northern Wyoming who have been spending weeks battling the Elk Fire. Much needed rainfall hit the state today as crews got a little help from Mother Nature and their continued battle with the blaze. Sheridan County says they will be reevaluating the evacuation in several areas with the precipitation helping them get a hold of the flames. Evacuation orders have already been removed from everything south and west of Bird Farm Road and Highway 87 intersection and west of Highway 193 to the Johnson County line and Forest Service boundary and west to the Brinton Road and Highway 335 intersection, moving southeast along the foothills to Kemp Creek. They also say that the area near Wagon Box will be re removed from evacuation status. After weeks of concern, residents in the area were grateful for the rainfall Thursday. You know, one of the things that have been really driving this fire activity has been winds, lack of cloud cover, dry conditions, parched fuels. So obviously the precipitation is certainly going to help subdue things uh, in the near term over the next several days and weeks. Sheridan County says that officials will continue to monitor fire behavior and make changes to evacuation statuses as they see fit. And it wasn't just Wyoming getting some precipitation today. Montana had plenty around the state. Look at this, the first snowflakes of the winter on Red Lodge Mountain. Some great news for any skiers and snowboarders out there gearing up for the season. For more on that full forecast and what it looked like around the state, here's Ed McIntosh. We'll enjoy the rain and the snow while we can here in the short term as uh, we'll see some of that, especially from Billings to the south and then favoring the mountains and the foothills throughout the evening hours of tonight before that starts to fade out of the picture. We'll show you more on that. Plus, the temperatures kind of level off at least around seasonal averages are a little bit warmer once we get past, especially Saturday morning. But could we have some more upper 70s and low 80s in our future? Got a nice mix of all kinds of weather. We'll give you the forecast in a few minutes. The investigation continues following the brutal murder of a Belgrade man near Moose Creek Road last week. 35-year-old Dustin Jersom was camping near Big Sky when the incident occurred. A press conference yesterday held by Gallatin County Sheriff's Office shared more details of this shocking case as Jersom's family continues to plead for answers. This weekend, we lost our brother, our son, our uncle, our best friends, and our dad in the most unimaginable way. Jillian Price is the older sister of 35-year-old Dustin Jersom, the Belgrade man found brutally murdered at his campsite Saturday morning. Holding back tears, Jillian described her brother. Dustin was a great kid. He was born here in Bozeman, and he worked all over the valley. He could have framed your house. He could have poured your foundation. He could have installed your countertops. He was a hardworking, skilled tradesman. Earlier on Wednesday, Jillian shared these photos of Dustin with me. She tells me Dustin was a great father. He was also loved by many friends around the valley. The last time Dustin was seen was Thursday afternoon when he was leaving to go camping in his truck, a black 2013 Ford F-250 with a black topper. He was well prepared for a weekend of camping and had plans to meet with a friend on Friday afternoon but he never made that meeting. That concerned friend went searching for Dustin Saturday morning. He was the one to find him dead in a campsite to the east of Highway 191 up Moose Creek Road. Dustin's injuries were so intense, his friend reported the incident as a bear attack. But upon investigation... This is a homicide. We are working all hours of the day and night to find his killer. Detectives say Dustin sustained multiple chop wounds from a weapon that remains undetermined. Gallatin County detectives have followed a few different leads, but there's currently no one in custody, which is why... We're asking the community members to help us in this way. What we need from you is anyone 
who was present in the area between the evening hours of Thursday, October 10, and the early morning hours of Saturday, October 12, to reach out to us. Detectives are asking anyone with trail cameras in the area, car cameras who traveled through the area, or anyone who saw Dustin's truck at the time to reach out. No matter how small or irrelevant you think the information is, detectives say anything helps. There is someone in our valley that is capable of truly heinous things. Please, if you are in Moose Creek, at any time from Thursday to Saturday, please call and talk, even if you think you didn't see anything. For ways to reach out with information, visit our website in Bozeman, Cassidy Powers, MTN News. A weight restriction for the Yellowstone River Bridge on Interstate 90 has been lifted. This is an update on a story we brought you Monday when the Montana Department of Transportation implemented the restriction for over the legal limit permitted loads. It all stemmed from 64 loose bolts found to be improperly tensioned. Those with MDT say they initially put the restriction in place to prevent potential long-term durability to the bridge, but that the bridge has remained safe. The EPA is proposing to reduce the acceptable amount of lead levels in Butte homes. Our Megan Thompson has reaction to the proposed plan from a local woman who's been advocating for safe cleanup of metals in the mining city for more than two decades. Community members here in Butte who've been fighting for decades for a proper cleanup of heavy metals got some great news today. I got news that was the best news I've had except for the the day I got married and the birth of my children, this is the happiest day of my life. For over 30 years, Barbara Miller has been building affordable housing in Butte, and for the past two decades, she's been one of dozens of voices raising concerns about the cleanup of toxic soils and dust in Butte. Today, the EPA announced the completion of a proposed plan detailing changes to the existing residential metals cleanup. We've had our futures tied behind our backs because we ha couldn't offer a clean and healthy environment. Beat Silver Bows worked so hard to make a good cleanup happen, but they ha didn't have the action level to match their intentions, and so this gives them that. The plan proposes a new cleanup level of 175 parts per million lead in soil and interior dust, replacing the current level of 1,200 parts per million. The plan also extends the cleanup boundary to include just over 7,000 homes, and the time frame for cleanup is also extended. It's something that we think will give children a whole different profile that are being raised in Butte today. This took more than 20 years of advocacy from quite a number of Butte citizens, and without the long-term commitment of our senior senator, we, this day wouldn't be here. In a press release, Senator John Tester says he will continue to work alongside the people of Butte to ensure lead removal moves forward in a timely manner. Barbara says the next step is for citizens to get involved in the 60-day open public comment period. The EPA will host an open house to learn more about the proposed changes on October 29th at 6 in the evening at Montana Tech. In Butte, Megan Thompson, MTN News. The nation's largest Catholic archdiocese has agreed to pay the largest settlement ever to victims of sexual abuse by priests. The Archdiocese of Los Angeles will pay $880 million to more than 1,300 people who say they were molested as children by Catholic clergy as much as 50 years ago. Church officials said the settlement would be paid out of reserves, investments, and loans, but would not require the Archdiocese to declare bankruptcy. Weekly jobless claims fell last week. The federal government reports first-time applications for unemployment benefits decreased from 19,000 to 241,000. That even accounts for the effects of Hurricanes Milton and Helene. Economists expected those events to push claims higher. Meanwhile, continuing claims, or those who have filed for unemployment for at least two weeks, rose by 9,000 to 1.87 million. Economists look at the weekly jobless claims reports for signs of how the labor market is faring. Americans are still opening their wallets despite years of elevated inflation. According to new government data, spending at U.S. retailers climbed 
0.4% in September from the prior month. The largest increase was seen at specialty stores, clothing stores, and at health and personal care shops. Sales at bars and restaurants also rose 1% last month. Meanwhile, sales of electronics and appliances plunged 3% from August. Consumer spending makes up about 70% of the U.S. economy, and retail sales are a sizable chunk of that. With polls showing a very close race just 19 days before Election Day, both major party candidates are trying to appeal to voters beyond their base. Natalie Brand reports from Washington, D.C. Vice President Kamala Harris is on a swing through Wisconsin, where the presidential race is considered a toss-up. She started with a stop at the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee as her campaign tries to turn out the youth vote. Now, since we're getting older and we're looking to buy houses, I feel like the economy is a big reason why I'm voting for who I'm voting. Former President Donald Trump stopped by a barber shop in the Bronx this afternoon with a large security detail. Tonight, Trump appears at the Al Smith dinner to raise money for Catholic charities, a tradition for presidential candidates. Harris will give pre-taped remarks as her campaign says she's focused on being in the battleground states. Trump's running mate campaigned in Pittsburgh this afternoon, making a play for energy-minded voters in western Pennsylvania. Between West Virginia, Ohio, Pennsylvania, we've got enough coal and natural gas to power a golden age of American prosperity. In North Carolina, another key battleground, early in-person voting kicked off with dedicated voters in Asheville, undeterred by the hurricane devastation. It's a civic duty to vote. We've got to take it, start taking it more seriously oh, okay. than we have in the past. Harris's running mate, Governor Tim Walz, is campaigning in Durham today alongside former President Bill Clinton. Natalie Brand, CBS News, the White House. Still to come on the MTN 430 News here on Q2. A big night for high school sports in Billings. We'll have the preview for two top-ranked matchups in both football and volleyball. But first, Ed will have a greater look at the forecast. Stay with us. We'll be right back.